So this is number two in the series, The Teachings of Nat Riddles. Nat Riddles, born in 1952, died in 1991 of leukemia, actually, was my teacher. Um, and I'm giving you ten of his lessons in sequence, ten of his teachings in sequence. Uh, and we're going to sort of track the, the way that he actually taught me. And so lesson number uh, two might be summarized as tongue blocking is crucial. Now when I met Nat, I was 27, he was 33, the man had some sounds that I'd never heard. Um, partly because he'd been listening to some players that I'd never heard of, uh, didn't, or hadn't really paid enough attention to. One of them was the first Sonny Boy, John Lee Williamson. Um, and another was Big Walter, Big Walter Horton. Now, I knew little Walter, I couldn't play his stuff. I was more familiar with uh, Sonny Terry, James Cotton, a little bit of Junior Wells. So tongue blocking is crucial. This is lesson, this is the teaching number two. When I met Nat, I could tongue block a little bit. I and, and I remember playing for him in our first lesson. I said, oh, tongue blocking, okay. Because that's the first thing he asked is, he said, do you, do you tongue block? I think I hear a little of that. And I said, yeah, well, there's a, there's a sequence in um, Too Many Drivers by Paul Butterfield, where Butterfield goes... And I said, that's, that's tongue blocking. He said, that's right. So you, you, you can do some of that. But then he said, what about... What about Big Walter Horton? We <laughs> said, what about this? I said, wow. He said, well, what about this? He took out a D harp. <laughs> Actually, he did something I still can't do. And so his way of doing John Lee Williamson had the following thing. Now, if I were to play it my way without tongue blocking, he did the same thing tongue blocking. And it had a counter rhythm that just freaked me out. Except he could also bend from the right corner of his mouth. So, and I would just go, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I can't show you all that, but I can show you a little bit of it. And um, what I can do is I can, let me, so let me move sideways for just a sec. And let me show you, let me show you a little bit of a song called Good Morning Little Schoolgirl. It's one that I've, I've recorded. The way that I do it is sort of an amalgam of many different versions. Now what's interesting is I could do that whole thing with no tongue blocking at all. Let me let me try to play exactly what I just played. It'll, it won't sound quite as good. And it's especially at the end, I think, where you really miss the tongue blocking. So I'm speaking to you now as somebody who either doesn't tongue block much or is a lip purser uh, uh, and wonders why you should. And let, now would say, well, because there's so many amazing textures that you can do. And so here's one of the things that, that, that Nat did that convinced me that I had to learn to tongue block. He played the following, following thing.
That was that first thing. I said, what are you doing? That's not a sound that a lip purser can make. I said, what are you, what are you doing? He said, well, he said, I'm taking my tongue and I'm lifting it lightly. I'm playing the 2-5 draw, so I'm lifting it lightly off the piece of wood between 3 and 4. Just a little bit. And I'm doing it in a rhythm. Okay. He said, and then I'm stressing it at, 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 to, in a certain way to make it to really bring out the accents. Wah, wah, wah. And then he said, and then I'm adding vibrato from my throat on top of all that. And I said, wow, okay. So those kind of, you can't make those kind of sounds unless you tongue block, and that's one of the things that Nat taught me. But here's another thing he taught me. And this is not really, doesn't seem to be part of this lesson, but it really is. He said, whenever you're going to learn a song, go and find three different versions of it. Now, back then, we didn't have iTunes. We didn't have the ease of accessibility. And yet he said, go and find at least a couple of different versions. So, Good Morning Little Schoolgirl by John Lee Williamson, by... Uh, uh, by Jimmy Rogers with Kim Wilson, by Junior Wells, Hoochie Coochie Man by Muddy Waters. It's a Willie Dixon song by Muddy Waters, Hoochie Coochie Man by Junior Wells. And what you find is that there, uh, you find that there are certain, or go back and get Me and My Chauffeur by Memphis Minnie, and you find out that a song like Good Morning Little Schoolgirls playing on a melody that's been around before Good Morning Little Schoolgirl. So that, that the, the study tape idea is a key teaching of Nat Riddles. Find three different versions. Ask yourself what they have in common. Try to dis figure out the common elements. Which one do you like more? Why do you like it more? Are they a different groove? Okay, so here's something else that Nat showed me. So I, I said, well, all that, I mean, when you tongue block, it's not just blocking. There's a whole, all this texture stuff. By the way, Nat's three-hole draw had a particular kind of yelpy sound that you get when you tongue block the one and two hole and bend the three. So you're getting the three with the right side of your mouth. Now I don't play that way. I tongue block when I'm going on hole four or above, but when I bend that three draw, I lip purse, except very rarely. But now was Now that's a great sound. It's not really my sound. That's my sound. Lip purse, but now There's a particular kind of sound that you get on that note when you do it that way. So if you really want the Nat Riddle sound, me, I, I wanted it, but I, was, I wanted to find my own way. If you really want the Nat Riddle sound, you got a tongue block and you got to... The other thing you got to do is you got to be willing. Now again, I evolved my own techniques partly as a way of trying to get his sound, but not realizing that he was doing tongue blocking way down on the lower holes. So for example, I didn't realize that he was playing the two-hole draw tongue block. I went, I evolved that technique. But the great advantage of, of his technique is that when you do that riff, that do you hear what I'm doing? I'm going dit 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 with my tongue on the one. Oh, I have to show you now that the teachings of Nat Riddles would be nothing without the El Cafe Street theme song, which he played on an A harp. Uh, 
<laughs> it's not one that I do very often. It's all tongue blocked except that one draw bend. So that's hardcore tongue blocking. Two draw. And notice, you get that little counter rhythm in there again. Lip pursing, if you tried to do all that lip pursing, so I'll do it lip pursed. Here's Nats. So what you get with the tongue blocking is you get more solid power and control. You get control. That's the and by the way, that riff that I did right there is good through all 12 bars. Try it. And then on the four chord. And by the way, the three draw, right corner of my mouth. So all this is very basic if you're at all a full-time tongue blocker. I am not, but that's the way Nat played. And he gets some incredible sounds doing that. All right, so, so Nat showed me that there were three different textures you could make using your tongue on the harp. One of them is to go, is to go side to side. One of them is to go in and out. What's the third one? I don't remember the third one. I'm sorry, I just remember those two. You can, of course, you can also um, keep your tongue on the harp and just move the harp. So three different things having to do with sort of tongue blocking. not quite the same. You know when you use that second one? Junior Parker solo on Sweet Home Chicago. Okay. We're almost done. Is that it? I think that's it. Tongue blocking is crucial. The second lesson of Nat Riddles. Tongue blocking is crucial. Don't forget it. All that stuff can be done tongue blocked. There we go. That's the tongue block thing. That plaintiff sound. Stay tuned for lesson number three.